side, bang, and goes back and forth. I'm practicing going through and in on it, and he's practicing stopping. One nice thing about this drill is this is a drill that leads nicely for closes, right? So if I'm going in and I'm going through like this, this is where a big problem happens, right? So as that's happening, I want to be able to cut this out of the way so that I don't get cut in the face, right? So these drills where you're getting a double, a double force, you're going bang, stopping it, let the other guy go. And he stops, he stops. But you're basically just pouncing. Now we're going to take this hand, we're just going to wash out, and then come up and address the head. But for this kind of a drill to work, with, out of this hand position, this is what we're looking for. Cutting in instead of cutting up like this, now I'm going to cut in like this, bang, and I put my fingertip right along his temple. And now I'm corkscrewing in, and I should get the guy pretty much in this position. Or just going in there with the Going to the next thing now, we've got the idea of, I'm seeing it's like uh, when I first met Jesse, I did a lot of stuff that was almost felt like a technique, or it was, it was to a point where I was applying it too softly with no edges or no corners. And Jesse really encouraged me to have the concept of sticking with the technique, right? So I'm not, I'm not, it's not this position that's doing anything, really. It's this position, a shear, the shear with an uh, idea of sticking and feeling my way all the way into his spinal cord, and then sticking with his body until it hits the ground as far as the throat. Like if I'm just going to hit him, maybe I can hit him and knock him silly without moving him all that much. If I get him to move from here to here, that's enough to get my shot. Right? If I want to throw him, when I get inside here, I'm going to keep moving to get him to clear out of position. Right now, I'm working as hard as I can to hold him up. Yes. I'm not trying to throw him, I'm just holding him up. And Dave used, Dave used to tell us, uh, Dave Bott, or Tom, and everybody that was around there will remember that he said that when you do these techniques right, you're almost trying to hold the guy up all of the time. And it's only when you fail at holding him up does he finally drop the leg. Right? So I'm not going in and trying to do this because this is going to trigger his his uh, weakness, fight or flight. I want to I want to feel and soothe him in, so he never feels a threat. Um, sensei would say it's like a mother soothing a baby. Right? So I want him to feel completely at ease until he's not at ease. So next position, come around. This time I want you to move all the way back, down for his opposite arm, front arm, and cut through the back position. So from here, you can take him down to the front, or from here, you can take him around to the side, or whatever. But if, at this point is when the techniques start to look fancy, right? But the thing is, they're the same. Cutting in, cutting in, cutting in, get him turned out, and I put my right leg up between his leg, and sharing his leg. My left hand's going either to the outside or the inside of his arm. And then I'm sticking with a spinal column here. And so, one more time. Going in, cutting him out, going either to the outside, or some of you will want to go to the inside, that's fine. And then sticking down the middle. 